welcome to Season 1, Episode 10 of Non-League to Legend. I am Kev, and we are champions. Um, as we saw in yesterday's episode, uh, Boston United have won the Vanarama Conference North with a game to go. Uh, coming up in a couple of minutes is the last live come of the season, which is the final game away to Staley Bridge, um, in which I'm going to try and mix things up a little bit and perhaps try some of these youth team players we talked about a couple of episodes. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I, I just need to show some of the nice messages I've had this week. Um, we'll start off just recapping the game. Obviously, we won 2-0. We left it very, very, very late, but it was enough to win the league. And that's all that matters. And there's the confirmation that we are Vanarama National League North champions uh, for 2015-16. Not all good news, because Lionel Stone did pull his hamstring in that game, so he's going to miss this last game of the season, which is part of the reason uh, behind me deciding to throw in a couple of uh, fringe players and youngsters, um, just because, why not? It's it's worth having a look at them, see, uh, to start really thinking about who's going to be able to keep a space in the squad for next season. Um, quite excitingly, I've had my budget for next season, and they've trebled my um my wage budget um as part of the promotion now to be fair the wage budget was two and a half grand and we were spending nearly four anyway so in reality it's only doubled what we were spending um but that's a massive massive increase and we've got a little bit of transfer budget as well we've got twenty five thousand pounds to play with so we're actually going to be able to hopefully bring some players in and build a squad that might actually be able to stay up um, in the conference as well, which is good news. And certainly the scouts are out straight away uh, trying to identify some players to bring in. Um, the board are obviously delighted. I've hit full on the confidence rating, uh, which is good. Um, bodes well going into next season because I think it probably will be a struggle. When we certainly don't look like a conference national team at the moment, so we do need to be quite active in the transfer market to have any chance of staying up. Um, but we're not going to have that guy. Um, I went straight away, tried to offer Dale Southwell a new con contract based on the fact we're going to be playing in a higher league next season. He's still not interested. I think he'll probably end up signing for a League 2 team. It will be gutting if he ends up playing for someone else in the same division as us next year. Because I'd like to think if he's going to be in the conference, he'll be with us. Um, we're certainly willing to offer him a huge pile of cash to make that happen. But I'd like to see him playing in the league next year. So if he goes off to a League 2 club, it will be very much of our blessing. And I hope he does well. Um, we do have a bit of a problem, though, because we don't really have anything in the way of a backup striker. Although Joey Joey Johnson, is that his name? I can't even remember his name. Has been doing OK lately. So maybe he'll push on and stake a claim for that spot. We have already started some transfer business, though. 24-year-old uh, winger Adam Mecky. Um, he was released by Tranmere. He's been on trial with us for the last couple of weeks. I sort of had him in and around the squad just as uh, just really to keep other people off of him in case we did go up. Um, he was far too good and far too expensive to come in uh, while we while we were in the Conference North. But I had a suspicion we'd get a bit of extra transfer budget if we went up. Um, he's going to be costing us £425 a week, but he played 10 games for Tranmere in the Conference National this season. Looks very, very good. He can play on either wing. Um, he's better than any winger we've currently got at the club. And when you consider that Jack Hartley, Kane Felix, uh, Will Summerfield are all some of our best players, uh, for this guy to be even better in the eyes of my assistant manager, um, he's quick, he's got good stamina, um, he's good at dribbling, he's got high flair. Um, and yeah, he's going to be coming in and joining us once the transfer window opens up again. And hopefully that's going to be the first of many transfers coming in. We re need a massive rebuild job on this squad um, to give us any kind of chance of staying up next year. Or if nothing else, we need to build a squad because at the moment we've got our first team and then not much depth beyond it. So to have any chance of staying up, we need to not be in a situation we were in this year where losing one or two key players really does cause major problems. We had it when Dale Southwell got injured um, and we really struggled for goals for a couple of months. And then we were probably affected even more when Lionel Stone got injured um, and we had to move Scott Garner out of midfield and play him in defence. And without a backup holding midfield player, we really, really struggled defensively for a little while. Um, so it's important to ideally get a squad of maybe 18 to 20 players who are good enough to be in our first team and Mekki is the first of hopefully six or seven top quality signings that we're going to be bringing in over the summer. Um, I am going to do a proper review of the season and how things have gone after the Lifecom match uh, but I think now is the time to get into that match and see how we get on. 
So this is the team that I'm going for. As I say, mi mixing things up a little bit. I've not gone crazy with this. Um, purely because we don't really have the depth in the squad to go completely crazy with it. Um, so we're keeping the, the core of the team in place just because, well, there's a couple of reasons really. Dale Southwell, I want him to play because it's probably going to be his last game for us. Um, I want him to finish the season as top scorer in the division. He still is at the moment, but it would be gutting to have someone pull ahead of him on the last day and him not on the pitch to have a chance at scoring some goals himself to secure that spot. So he plays um, in what's almost certainly his last game for us, unless he has a huge change of heart. Um, Kyle Dixon's been ever-present all season and has been our highest-rated player. It would be wrong of me not to let him play in every single game of the season. He's been that good that he has to play. And Scott Garner's the captain and is incredibly important, so he plays as well. Um, and like I say, we don't have a backup ball-winning midfielder, so he kind of has to play. Um, and Kyle Pergiani um, is going to be playing at centre-back just because uh, Stone is injured with his hamstring injury and we don't really have a second backup centre-back. Um, so Darcy O'Connor comes in to play alongside him. We signed him January, February time um, with a view to the future. We need to really get a proper look at him in a game um, to see if he's going to be good enough to be part of our squad in a higher league. He would have been a, he would have been a fantastic player for us next season in this division. I've got a few question marks over him for playing in the Conference National, though, so have a proper look at him today, see how he gets on. Uh, Zach Mills will play, and Dylan Casey will play, because I expect them to be our first-choice fullbacks next season. Um, I've put Jason Alexander in goal, because I had a media report, not a media report, a coach report, saying he's now got the potential ability to be a future League 2 goalkeeper. Um, now, he was a bit of a disaster when he played for us earlier in the season, but... If his potential ability is increasing that much, let's give him another game, see how he gets on. Um, he might might have improved, who knows. Or this might be a chance to say, actually, yeah, he's never going to be good enough. Let's ship him off in the summer. Um, out wide, um, we're playing Jack Hartley for his last game. He's going to go back um, to wherever he's on loan from. Is he a Notts County guy? I can't even remember where he came from. In fact, we can probably have a look, can't I? Um, he's on loan from, where does it even tell me? We'll go on his history. So he's on loan from Accrington. He'll probably be going back there next season. Um, so it'll be a last game for him. And then Nicky Walker um, was very important for us early in the season, but got an injury and never really made it back into the team. Um, so we'll give him a last go. I'm probably going to release him in the summer. There's a couple of clubs interested in him. Uh, so he might be on his way out unless he's exceptionally good today. And then Owen Heather, kind of the forgotten man. Um, he's going to come in and uh, play as the target man alongside Southwell. The bench really mix things up, mixes things up, though. We've got Jordan Fell, the young goalkeeper we signed a um, month, six weeks ago now. Um, and then Morgan Ferrier, um, just because I've liked the look of him in the little snippets that he's played. Um, so probably we'll bring him on for Southwell as the game goes on. And then I've got three of the youth players who, uh, sorry, two of the youth players who came in um, in this year's youth intake. Probably the best two. William Humphreys is a right back and Connor Todd is a right winger. Um, and then Liam Mars, just because he's not played all season, I think it would be humorous for him to play in the last game. Um, he's he's going in the summer, though. He certainly won't be sticking around. And he's kind of just on the bench to make up the numbers. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to swap him for someone else because if we need to bring on a right back, it's going to be Humphrey. So there's no way Mars is coming on the pitch. So who can we put? In fact, let's put Summerfield on the bench. No, Kane Felix. Let's have Kane Felix on the bench instead of Liam Mars. Um, just because Felix didn't get to play in the last game and it would be nice to bring him on. Um, especially now Mekki's coming in. Felix might not be a first choice next season, so it could be almost a goodbye game for him as well, despite him being so important for us this year. So let's submit this team. Yeah, that's fine. And we're not even favourites for this match. It's ridiculous. Staley Bridge are probably going to get relegated today. Um, they're three points adrift at the bottom. Um, they've got a worse goal difference than Gainsborough. They've got to win and win well against the champions. I don't see how they're favourites. Perhaps our team selection's gone into that a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's go out and prove a point. Hopefully we'll win the match. I'm not that bothered if we don't. What I really want is for Southwell to get a hat-trick to make sure that he's top scorer in the division. And I want the opportunity to bring on some of these young players and have a look to see what they're like. It's important to get a good game out of Darcy O'Connor. Um, I think that's going to be a big test about whether or not he's going to be part of our squad next year. And then I want to get these 
youth players on in the second half to see what see if they're any good. Um, we can get rid of this now. We don't care what's going on in the other matches. So let's take that off. Uh, Kyle Dixon has picked up a knock. After me saying I wanted him to be ever-present, he's signalling that he wants to come off. It's only a dead leg, Kyle. Stay on the pitch. I want you to be ever-present all season. And we don't really have a central midfielder to bring up. In fact, did we have Ben Marlow on the bench? I don't think we did, did we? So, um, yeah, you have to stay on, Kyle. And that's 1-0 to Staley Bridge. Kind of expected it, really. They're desperately trying to keep to stay in the league. And we're playing uh, not really bothered. So we're probably not going to win the match. But we shouldn't be. I mean, that's O'Connor, really. We shouldn't be giving him that much space. And Darcy O'Connor has left him with a lot of space there. So possibly he's already starting to answer the question that I had over him. Perhaps he's not the man to be one of our centre-back options for next season. But you never know. He might make a whole load of excellent tackles as the game goes on. But that one kind of goes down against his name, I think. And it's all quiet down. Ah, oh, we finally had a shot. Right, there we go. We've got the ball. Lumped up to Heather, but he... Oh, that's a terrible goal to concede. Who are we blaming that one on? Was that O'Connor? Was that Jason Alexander in goal? Let's have a look in the 3D. We shouldn't be lumping the ball forward. We're better than that. But O'Connor's let his man get past him. And Alexander... I mean, that's a combination of the goalkeeper and the defender there. And it's the two players I wanted to have a look at because there were question marks over them. I think, 23 minutes in, they're answering the questions. Um, because that is not good enough for this league, let alone the one above. So I think both of those players might be finding themselves surplus to requirements in a couple of days' time when the retained list comes out. Well, Alexander does quite well there, keeps hold of the ball. Come on, let's, let's get the ball up to Southwell. Let's let him get a couple of goals. That's what today should be about. I don't want us to get absolutely hammered because it's going to affect confidence going into next season then. And also, it's not then the ideal game to blood young players in if you're already 3 or 4 nil down. So we need to, get back, need to get back into this game somehow. We're not looking with it at all. Hangovers, I think. That's probably the problem. Well, we've had a week of celebrations. So I should have... They should have calmed down a little bit by now. We are dominating possession again, though. It's like the story earlier in the season when Scott Garner wasn't in the side, or wasn't in midfield anyway. Um, we're dominating possession, but not really creating anything. We've not had a shot on target yet. They've had two clear-cut chances and scored them both. I put that down probably to the goalkeeper and O'Connor. I like a scapegoat. Although Dylan Casey's not having a good game, looking at that. Yeah, his average rate, his, sorry, his rating for this game is 5.9. That's pretty poor. Having said, I'd like him to be first choice left back this season. He's not doing himself any favours in this game. Um, but I don't expect Kelly Yuga to be at the team next season. He's already into his 30s. And um, I expect will struggle to make the step back up a league. So he's probably going to be on his way. So at the very least, Casey's going to be one of two left backs at the club next season. Partly with the cross. Heather can't get there. Come on, let's get one back before half-time. Zach Mills with the throw-in. He can launch them into the area from here, but doesn't find any of our players. Hartley on the edge of the area. Oh, that was a that was a cracking shot from long range. We're going to miss Jack Hartley. Hopefully Adam Mackey's going to come in and fill that void. Of course, it, we might even be able to get him on loan again for another season, which would be the ideal situation. So it looks like we're going in at half-time 2-0 down. Yes, we do need to go and prove a point, because that is just not good enough. We're supposed to be the champions. I'm going to give it 15 minutes, and then bring the two youngsters on, at the very least. Because I want to give them an opportunity to see if they're any good. So that'll be one coming on at right back for Mills, and one on the right side of midfield for Walker. And then we'll see how the rest of the game pans out, I guess. We're not creating anything, are we? Shows really how thin our squad is because we've not taken many of the regulars out the side. This 3 0 down now. There's still most of the core of this team is there on the pitch today. We're playing against a poor side um, and we're just helping them to get their goal difference up. Now they might be saving themselves with this result. We're going to get investigated by the FA for fielding a weakened team. Does that happen in Football Manager? It should. Because I can imagine if I was the team who were one place above Staley Bridge, I would be making 
all sorts of complaints about this team that I've put out today if uh, if they end up getting relegated. They probably had it as a banker that we'd beat Staley Bridge today. Garner's got the ball out wide to Hartley. Can he find Casey? Casey's whipped the cross in, but Heather can't get on the end of it. It's back out to Hartley and then to Garner again. Mills now with the opportunity to get a cross in, but slips it forward to Walker. Walker just pops it into the hands of the goalkeeper. And that's probably going to be Walker's last contribution in a Boston shirt. So I don't imagine he's going to be at the club next season, and I'm about to take him off. So let's bring hum William Humphreys on at right back. And Connor Todd is going to come on. Actually, wants to play on the left. Okay, well, we can make that happen. So we can move Hartley over to the right. So Connor Todd can play on the left-hand side of midfield. Hartley on the right. We'll leave it there for now. And then we'll probably bring Kane Felix on in 10, 15 minutes' time. Bring Hartley off. Get him a nice little round of applause on his final appearance. Or do we do that with Southwell and bring Ferrier on? We should probably do that with Southwell, shouldn't we? Although it could be my way of saying, well, I know Hartley's leaving, but Dale, we kind of want you to stick around for another year. So you're not getting your round of applause. You're staying on the pitch. Dixon finds Hartley. Ball spills free, and Todd looks very lively. He's certainly moving around the pitch. Or Humphreys with the throw to Dixon. Back out to Humphreys, who finds Heather. We need to get the ball back here. Oh, and that's very sloppy defending. We've given them a lot of space there. And Alexander's actually done well with the save there. Because I think that's probably been marked up as a clear-cut chance. So Alexander, give him his dues. He did well with that stop. But he didn't do so well with that one. And that's Carl Piagiani who's let that guy slip past him there as well. He really should know better. And um, we can't blame this one on O'Connor at all. Piagiani's lost his man. Hints of offside. And Alexander should probably do better with that. I think my decision's made about Jason Alexander, that's for sure. Um, but O'Connor's having a nightmare as well. Dylan Casey's also having a poor game. All right, I think it's time to take... In fact, yeah, Kyle Dixon is shattered, but I don't really want to take him off. I think Dale Southwell's going to come off in a minute. Probably bring Kane Felix on for him. Hartley, can he get... No, Humphreys gets the cross in. No, that was a good cross. And Owen Hever's got one back for us. His fifth goal of the season. We obviously can't get back into it, but it's noticeable that that was a good cross from the young player, Humphreys. Does that go down as an assist for him on his debut? It bobbled around a little bit before Hever found it, so probably not. Um, no, it's not going to be an assist, but it was a decent ball into the box all the same. And... I guess now is the time for a substitution. I am going to have to take off Kyle Dixon because I don't want him to get injured. What's up with him? He's not actually got an injury. He's just struggling a little bit. But who can we actually... We can't really... We haven't got anyone to move around to take him off. So taking him off is not really an option. I think Southwell's going to come off. We'll let him have his goodbye, his clap. The away fans give him his round of applause. He's waving at them. He's saying goodbye. We all know he's leaving. No one wants him to. And we're now all terrified that this could be our strike partnership for next season. It shows that we really do need to bring in two strikers because we can't have Heather and Theria as a strike partnership, a league above this, because they just they can't cut it at this level, really. Dixon gets it out to Todd, though. Todd finds Casey. Casey's cross goes nowhere. He's had a really poor game doing Casey. Definitely need a left-back as well. This game, although we're getting hammered, is being useful for identifying the players we need to be bringing in. I know Connor lost his man completely there, but Humphreys does quite well. The two young players are they're playing quite well. This is encouraging Humphreys with another good challenge there. Plays the ball forward to Heather. I've been impressed with the two young lads. The future may be bright. Kind of wish I'd put another couple of them on the bench now. But they kind of all were wingers, so we didn't really need more than one winger on the bench. Well, we've got Kane Felix on there as well, who's not come on. But that is kind of an embarrassing way to end the season. We've got hammered by a team who are probably still going to get relegated. Um, and we're making an absolute hash of that as well. Humphreys gets the ball to Dixon. Dixon knocks it back to O'Connor. Why are we tapping the ball around? Our defence sat in their half. It's, we're just asking for them to break on us again. And here they go. But that's full time. 
that's humiliating. We shouldn't be losing to them. I hope they've stayed up because they've just hammered us and deserved it. Um, yeah, not good enough. We should have won that match. They didn't stay up anyway, so we just got hammered by a team that got relegated. Uh, Gloucester picked up the point that they need, so Staley Bridge go down anyway. Not a bad side. Might have to scout some of their players and pick from the bones of the corpse of their side. Um, but that's it. That's the end of the season. So that's how things are finished. Um, we've won the league by three points in the end. Playoffs are made up of Lowestoft, Lowest Telford, Stockport and AFC Fylde. And relegated are Staley Bridge, Bradford and Chorley. Um, Dale Southwell did finish as the top goal scorer in the division on 25 goals. Um, and Kyle Dixon has finished as the highest average rating by a mile, 7.43, uh, 0.2 ahead of his nearest challenger. Um, Kane Felix has fallen out of the assists table, though, which is a shame. Um, but he hasn't really played for the last few games, so it's kind of understandable. And if we just have a quick look at our squad, I'm not going to spend ages going through this in great detail. But if we just filter this to senior squad and look at the average ratings, top of the tree... Kyle Dixon, what a season he's had. Um, he's earning a lot of money. We can afford it now, luckily. Um, but he's played 42 games. He's only scored two goals, but he's had seven assists, seven Man of the Match awards. He's just been very, very consistent. His pass completion percentage is excellent for this level. Um, and he's just been a major contributing factor to the success of our season. So really happy with the way he's played. We know all about Dale Southwell. It's such a shame. Let's try and offer him a contract again. He's going to say no. Yeah, he says no again. Uh, we're going to miss him. Um, he's made. He's scored 25 goals in 32 games. Um, I mean, that's just an excellent goal return. Um, especially when you consider how much of the season did he miss. He... He broke his ankle in September and was out for three months um, and has still scored 25 goals. Um, he still finished top goal scorer when he spent time out of a broken ankle. He's going to be playing in League 2 next season. If he's not, then the League 2 managers are all insane. If I was a League 2 manager now, I would be snapping that player up. Uh, Lionel Stone, very important player um, in our defence. And Scott Garner as well, very, very important um, player particularly playing in that midfield role. Jack Hartley, I will definitely look to bring in on loan again for another season. He's been really important. He came in on loan um, when Nicky Walker first got injured and just never let Walker back into the side, um, which is always a sign of a good player. So we're going to try and keep him. Um, unlikely, I would guess. Um, I'm not sure where Accrington finished. Let's have a look. Assuming they didn't get relegated, they're probably going to want it in themselves. Oh, have they been relegated? Is that a relegation spot? No, they've just survived. He he might well want a feature for them next season. We'll have to see. If they don't want him, we'll certainly take him for another year. Um, Kane Felix had a cracking start to the season. He fell away a little bit towards the end, um, which is a shame. And if we look at the assistant manager reports, he's actually sort of dropping down the pecking order a little bit, um, which is a bit of a shame. Hopefully his level wasn't Conference North. I'd like to see him carry on playing well next season. He's so quick, um, which is why he's so effective. Um, and he, we have been trying to develop him into playing as an inside forward as well. So if we do go with the 4-2-3-1 next season, which is something I'm toying with, it would be quite handy to have him as a right footer up on that left wing spot, cutting inside as an inside forward. And then with Summerfield and Mekki as the other attacking midfield players, that could be quite effective um, if we can find the right striker to go in front of them. Uh, Nicky Walker was OK, but didn't really play a lot of matches and he's probably going to be on his way. He's wanted, so I imagine he's going to go. Deli Adebola, um, sorry, missed out Carl Piergiani, who, again, he's fallen away a little bit as the season went on. Um, I imagine he's still going to be good enough to play for us next season, though, so expect him to be around in the squad. Deli Adebola, bless him. Um, so important to us early on, and we really did struggle to replace him as his fitness drifted away. Um, if we look at his uh, development over the season, um, there we go, attribute changes. Um, just looking at things like his pace, drifting off as the season has gone on, his agility, his acceleration, natural fitness, oh, that's still okay. Um, but everything, strength, stamina, it's all just nose diving. He's, he's going to be 41 um, around the time of the start of the next season. I think we probably have to call it a day with him. But what a fantastic season at 40 years of age. To get 13 goals, um, almost with a 7 on his average rating, there's only been 
one season in his entire career where he scored more than 13 goals. So very happy with that signing. Definitely did a job for us. And I'd love to find another gem like that to uh, to come in and do a similar job for us next season. Will Summerfield, I think definitely one for next season. Um, most natural is an attacking midfielder. We've been playing him out wide on the left for the last few games. But I think he definitely has potential um, to be to play in that hole behind the right striker if we can find him, and could be a real a real find for us next season. Um, and Zach Mills a little disappointed with his average rating. Um, he just kind of is consistent. Um, doesn't ever seem to pl- be playing poorly on the match engine, but I guess because he's quite a defensive fullback, he's never going to get a particularly high average rating because he doesn't score a lot of goals, doesn't get a lot of assists. But I've been happy with him. Um, and that's about that. If we sort it by goals, um, you can see just how reliant we were on Dale Southwell. 25 goals. Deli Adebola got 14. And then Joey Johnson with 10. And then it's just basically a few bits here and there shared out around the rest of the team. So when you consider that we're going to be losing Southwell, who are going to be losing Adebola, um, and Johnson will probably be around the squad, but not as a starter. And we're basically having more than half of our goals ripped out of the side. And we're playing in a higher league. So priority number one is go and find one, if not two, good strikers um, that can come in and hopefully score the goals to keep us up. Uh, if we have a quick look at the finances, um, considering we've been way massively over the wage budget all season, we've done okay. Um, we've got quite a healthy balance. It's only going to get healthier as we go up. Um, and I'm fairly happy with that. And the board should be, uh, there you go, I'm untouchable. I can live with that. If we look at the board confidence, um, they're over the moon with our finances, which I've been moaning about all season. Um, fantastic performance, they're happy with their major criticism. Disappointing with the performances of Dale Southwell. That's the guy who's about to win player of the season and is top goal scorer. Not my fault he decided to stop trying after he decided he was leaving. But uh, overall, very happy with that season. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you put a like on this episode um, and subscribe to the channel so that you can... Uh, get involved in the next episode which is going to be um the story of the summer transfers really in the first game of next season so exciting stuff getting ready for season two thanks very much for watching